Hello, this is the Stories Beside channel. I release videos every day for you. Subscribe and click the bell. Camille was often home alone. She was so tired of it that she wanted someone to be there for her. Her mother was always at the office. She worked as a bookkeeper for the village council, so she often stayed late. Camille, are you asleep? Did a woman come in the house? No, she came out of her room. Then let's have dinner. She put the groceries from her bag on the table. Okay, why did you take so long again today? Look, that's what I get paid for. I need to make sure there are no mistakes. The woman didn't like the subject. Good. Her daughter agreed with her. They ate and then went to bed. In the morning, the girls had to go to school and the mother had to get up for work again. Hello, Stephen met her on the way. Hello, Camille. I liked him. How are you? He picked up the girl's briefcase. Fine. She was coloring. We'll go out tonight. He asked simply. Okay, they were already approaching the school porch. But what did he say to you? Evelyn's best friend came up to her. Nothing. She was still staring at the guy's back. Well, Camille, tell me, it was interesting. Is it okay that we're going out tonight? The girl confessed. Did you say yes to that? Evelyn was sure that Camille would torment him for a long time. How much longer? School will be over soon. He'll just leave. And I'll be left with my pride. She was sure of it. Look at you. Anybody could take you. She was sure of it. Thank you for the compliment, of course. But I wish it was Stephen. She blushed again. They went to class. And lessons began. But Camille didn't care about them. She thought only of the young man. The class dragged on slowly. It was boring. Finally, everything was over. The girl went out into the schoolyard, but Stephen was not there waiting. Caught up with her Camille. Leave me alone, could not bear to be under the floorboards of her friend Camille any longer. She went home for lunch and decided to do her homework. She couldn't think of anything to do. She looked out the window every now and then. When it was 6 o'clock p.m., he came. At first Camille wanted to run out to meet him, but after a moment she thought that would be rash. Sitting back down on the table, there was a knock on the window. Camille looked out, smiled, and shook her head to indicate that she was about to come out. Hi. He was grinning from ear to ear. Why so happy? Though shy, she spoke confidently. I saw you. He didn't hide the fact that he liked the girl. Let's go. She smiled and pulled him by the hand. They went to the river bank. It was a favorite place for all young people. But Stephen and Camille did not want anyone to see them. They decided to go further to the fisherman's cottage, which had long been abandoned. Come here. He gave her a hand so she wouldn't fall through on the bridge, where the boards were already cursed. Thank you. She jumped to the ground and fell right into his arms. Now he went to the doors and tried to open them, but nothing worked. Then Stephen took a piece of iron that was lying here on the ground, slipped it under the boards, piled on, and the door held nothing. Camille could only say. They stepped inside. The place smelled of musty netting. There were old nets around, dirty rags, some kind of mattress. Come here, the boy beckoned her. They laid that very mattress against the wall with another flake thrown on it. They made themselves comfortable. Across from where they sat there was a small window that overlooked part of the trees and the sky. Beautiful. Camille sat in Stephen's arms. Like you, he whispered in her ear. What? She laughed and turned to him. You're beautiful. He touched her hair that had gotten out of its ponytail. Their faces were very close together. Stephen couldn't help himself. He kissed Camille. You what? She got away from him and blushed. I love you. He held her hands. What are you saying? What kind of love can there be at our age? She said it. She didn't want him to let her go. Come to me. He pressed down on her chest again. She could smell him. She liked him. Stephen stroked her head, her back, her neck. They were nice touches. He leaned in, kissed her. First on her temple, then on her shoulder, then down to her neck. Camille froze. The guy just stroked her and kissed her. I can't, 
She made him do it. What was he like coming to his senses? She turned on her back, planted her lips on his. Stephen leaned into her. It was an unusual feeling. The young people gave in to an impulse of tenderness. They were both inexperienced and did everything out of inertia. I will never leave you. He whispered to her. I love you, she answered him. They lay like that on the old mattress for a long time. Stephen held her in his arms, Camille drowned in those arms. It was time to go home. He kissed her. Yes. She stood up and looked at him and smiled. They walked out of the cabin, closing the door to make it look like it was like that. Stephen walked along with Camille to her house until he came close to her and said this is Stephen's hair. She hugged him until tomorrow. He kissed her on the cheek as if he was afraid someone would see. Camille walked into the house. She couldn't believe all that had happened. Her body was burning. She could still remember kissing Stephen. What were you looking at her like that for? Emily. What girl didn't understand? I don't know. The woman shrugged. You don't know, but you ask. The girl was embarrassed. It seemed to her that everyone could see and understand what had happened to her today. She lay on the bed and thought about her boyfriend, and she had never felt so good before. She thought it was for life. Now they would graduate from high school, and a whole different life would begin. Stephen would be the master of their family and home. Hi. He caught up with her the next day on her way to school. Hello. She came up to him. But the guy didn't hug her for some reason. Later, he looked around again. I feel like you're embarrassed of me. She was offended. What are you saying? He took her hand. They walked to the school. Stephen went back to his friends, and Camille stayed standing by the porch. Hi. Evelyn came up behind her. Scared her, her friend turned to her. Why are you cursing like that? Am I so scary? The girl laughed. Oh, Evelyn, don't start. Camille looked at where her lover was standing. What's wrong with him? The girlfriend was also looking in the same direction as Camille. Look at him. Isn't he handsome? She said it with fondness. Girlfriend, I see we've lost you. You're gone. You've made your point, Evelyn. The bell rang and all the boys entered the school building. In class, they didn't want to think about anything but the young man. Camille remembered her feelings from the day before. It had been inexpressible. When the lessons were over, she hurried towards the exit. She didn't want the boy to leave without her. But she didn't have time because Stephen was nowhere to be found, that skittered away already laughed by her friend behind her back. Evelyn, leave me alone. It hurt Camille that he did not wait for her, and she found home alone. But when she had only a few meters to go, she heard someone calling her. Why are you hiding here? She came to the bushes. Where did Stephen call her from? I'm not hiding from you. I'm waiting. He seemed offended. So there she was. She's in front of him. You come here. He beckoned her to him. Now Camille looked around and York to where her boyfriend was. To what you're looking back, he laughed. Shut up. She blushed again. Yes, she realized now what she was so embarrassed about, Stephen. The village was small. Everyone knew each other. There was no need for anyone to tell her mother about them. Come on. He winked at her okay. Let's at least leave the bags at home. She looked at her large briefcase. Okay, they walked down the path that led to the girl's house. There they ditched, I'll show you, and headed to the house where they'd spent time yesterday. Sorry, he tucked a strand behind her ear as they lay back on the same mattress. It was okay. She loved being around him so much. That's how it would always be. Would you like to be my wife? The young man asked. He leaned back. Would you take it? She doubted it. First of all, it was still short summer. And secondly, they had only been dating for a couple of days. Why not? Here graduated from school, went somewhere, and then you can think about marriage. He spoke dreamily. Camille realized that it would happen, but not so soon. So she forbade herself to think about it. He turned to her and embraced her. She brought her face close to his. You're so beautiful. He began to kiss her. I love you. She responded to those kisses. Again today, 
They spent the whole day in their private place. Camille was free to come and go from the house. No one knew where or with whom she was. Her mother, as always, was very busy. So the daughter did what she wanted. But until tomorrow, they said goodbye at the gate. The mother entered the girl's house, but there was silence in return. They started going out with Stephen. No girlfriends, walks and discos Camille didn't need anymore. She wanted to be only with him. She saw nothing else. Why don't you get up? Their mother came to them in the morning. I can't. I feel sick, Camille answered. I see something very pale. Emily touched her head. I'm not going. For school today, Camille bowed her head off the bed. She spun around nicely, petted her mother. The woman left and Camille remained lying in the bed. It was a pity only one thing she would not meet Stephen. But the girl was wrong. Already in the afternoon he was outside her house. Camille shouted to him at the gate. She heard, but could not even get up to open to him. The guy did not hesitate, stuck his hand in the hole, pulled the deadbolt and entered the yard unhindered. You're home. He was already in the kitchen. Come in. He heard from the room where the girl was lying. What's wrong? Did he see that she didn't say hello? I don't know. She lay on her back, but at that moment a fit of nausea came up to her throat again. To sit with you he came closer and if you don't mind me saying so, it was immediately different with him. The nausea receded a little, even the poverty was gone. He sat down on the edge of the bed, took Camille's hand in his. It was cold. Why are you all friendly? He was worried about her. I can't say. She looked up at him. Maybe the doctors. Was he ready to run to the nurse's station? No, don't. It'll get worse. I'll go myself. She stopped him. So they sat there until the evening. The girl felt better. She even got up. They drank tea. I have to go. Stephen hugged the girl. Camille continued to study. Sometimes she felt as bad as that time. Don't you think you eat too much? The other night she asked Emily, Mom, are you going to reproach me with food? I couldn't believe it, could you? No, look at the way she did it. The woman pointed to her waist area. Camille noticed it herself. Her favorite skirts and dresses didn't fit her. She was nervous about it, but she put it down to the fact that she had been eating more lately. And you are ready not so tasty. The girl laughed. That's what you said mom smiled affectionately at her daughter. But by spring it became noticeable that this fullness is not just for nothing. Come here. Her mother called her then. What Camille came up to her. The woman pulled up the dress her daughter was wearing. Not for nothing the neighbor told me that Emily clutched her head. Mom, what were you looking at? At her and your belly. Are you stupid? You don't understand anything. She pointed her finger. No. Why? Camille began to suspect something wrong, but she was afraid to even think about it. You're pregnant. Where did she go out? The woman asked. Mommy. The girl cried. She sat down on the stool that stood next to her. What mom? Hugged her daughter and cried. Emily Stephen. Camille did not look at her, seeing him here. What a bunch of students. The woman was indignant. Now a girl came out of the house. I don't understand what happened. She dragged Stephen by the hand to her house. You'll understand now. Camille was angry with him. Well, Vitek, what shall we do? The woman stood by the feathers with her hands at her sides. What am I to you, Vitek? That looked at Camille. And he was scared. And who else? Are you going to have a child soon? She pointed at her daughter that he sat down and covered his eyes with his hands. How am I going to face the neighbors now? They will say that with my work I have abandoned my daughter. The woman screamed. I don't know how it could have happened. Stephen was confused. He didn't know where to look. But I know how to hit on girls, so he knows. But how do you answer for it? She didn't finish. What do we do now? The guy was talking to Camille's mom. It's like it never happened. What do we do? Do what? Play the wedding. Emily said firmly. But we're still in school. He went back to doing whatever it was he was doing. So school was not brought up. The woman went to her room. How? 
He whispered to Camille silently. She was shocked by everything that was happening. It was necessary to inform her parents. But how to do it? The guy had absolutely no idea. He didn't want to go home that day. But he didn't have to say anything to anyone. When Stephen entered the house, his mother and father were sitting in the kitchen waiting for him. Did you already know? The boy guessed. How could you? All his life broke in girls, and himself mother was determined, but now she could not resist and cried. That's enough. What are you all talking about? I'll take her as my wife, and we'll have a baby. It'll be a real family. He wanted to go to his room, but his father stopped him. Where will you live? He held his son's hand. We'll figure it out. I didn't want to talk about it. The boy. We'll figure it out. He exhaled a man's breath. From that day on, the whole village did nothing but talk about the case. Each time the news got more and more interesting, Camille was already pregnant, not by Stephen, but by someone unknown. And he just took pity on her, took her under his wing. The girl's mother agreed with the chairman, and he agreed to marry the young people. It so happened that at the graduation stood no longer a guy and a girl, but a husband and wife. Will you live here? Strictly said Camille's mother. It was better for the girl then. I'll go. I'll try to get a job, said Stephen. All plans to study in the city and move there were put off. Or maybe they weren't meant to come true. At first, the guy pretended to be a family man. A healthy girl was born, whom the parents named Jenna. Husband brought money into the family to take care of his daughter. But when he got the summons, his joy and zeal diminished. How could it be? Camille wondered, how can I be alone? She cried every day, but there was nothing they could do about it. Stephen went into the service. Will it be hard? Emily told her, I realized that myself. Camille was afraid to be alone, but her parents, Stephen and her mother helped her with everything. Jenna was an active child. She was always busy. Camille looked at her and realized that she was still a child herself but she already had her own. She wrote letters to her husband in the army. He answered, but unlike Camille, he rarely did. He came back. His daughter was over two years old. Didn't recognize her at first. Stephen, how long has it been since we've seen each other? Camille pressed them to him, but all that tenderness, he turned his back on her. When he came to the army, he saw that it was possible to live differently from the village. Now he wanted something different. He regretted the way things had turned out between him and Camille. And if he could turn back the clock now, he wouldn't look at her at all. Stop sitting here, his mother-in-law told him. I want to sit here. He poured himself another shot. My wife and child missed you here. And there you are. Emily stood and fed him. I need to get used to it, he said and realized that he had no feelings for his wife anymore. What was that about? The mother didn't understand. To everything snapped at the young man. Oh, everything is clear with you. Do not need it will be brave. Get up. Leave. She went to the room where her granddaughter was sleeping. And that's what I'll do. Stephen sneered. He got up from the stool staggered, took his papers and left the house. Mom, where's Stephen? Camille came back from the store gone quietly, said Ta didn't understand. It was the girl's turn to be surprised. He said he needed to get used to you. I showed him the door. The woman was minding her own business. How could you do that? Camille cried. Don't cry. You don't deserve to cry for him. He spoiled a girl, gave birth to a child, and then he went to the bushes. I guess he didn't like it. Emily came up and hugged her daughter. What about us? She didn't understand. Tears rolled from her eyes. It's okay. You're still young. You'll find a groom. She wiped her daughter's tears. The paperwork had to be done. When six months passed and Stephen never came back, Camille decided to divorce him. Mom helped with everything. I wondered, why had Stephen's parents stopped communicating with their ex-daughter-in-law and granddaughter? But no one asked them that. Well. Guess what? One evening mom and daughter were sitting at the table and Jenna ran the same look at the woman Camille. Why don't you go to the city, get an education, get a job?
Maybe you're looking for a normal husband. Emily reasoned. What about Jenna? She looked at her daughter. Why doesn't she stay with me for a while? And how are you going to do that? You'll come back for her right away. The grandmother bent down and took her granddaughter in her arms. Well, I thought about it too, but I didn't dare to tell you. I thought maybe you wouldn't agree. Camille hugged her mom. Once we talked about it, that was the end of it. Camille gathered all her papers and went to conquer the city. Everything was new there. Not often had to get out of the village. The girl applied, enrolled. She was provided with a dormitory, moved in. When she lived with her mother and daughter, she did not think that there was such a strong connection between them. And now, when she was alone in a strange city, she felt the lack of relatives. Just because she was so sad, her roommate Wendy came over to her. I miss my daughter. She put a picture on the table. Wow, such a young and already so big daughter. The girl was surprised. Yes, but I don't regret anything. Camille stroked the image of Inga not sad. Sometimes you have to make sacrifices. The neighbor gave wise advice. I'm trying. She stood up, went to the light switch to turn off the light. Studying wasn't hard. Camille did it with pleasure. She was preparing for the subject, snapping the tasks like peanuts. By the end of the session, there was almost no need to take exams. Everything was put by automatic. Home for the holidays, Wendy asked. Yes, she missed you very much. I can't wait to see you. Camille wanted to go shopping for a doll for her daughter, and then go. I'll see you later. They hugged each other. There were a lot of people in the store. Everyone wanted to please the children on this fabulous holiday. Sorry, Camille felt like she stepped on someone's foot. A man had just cleaned his shoes and was looking at them. I didn't do it on purpose. Camille really didn't mean it. She pulled a handkerchief out of her pocket. I wanted to get my mark off the victim's shoe. You what? He grabbed her arm. I'm sorry again. The girl couldn't find other words. Let's go. He took her to the place where there were the least people. Why? She didn't understand what this man wanted from her. Now he sat down and rubbed his shoes with some kind of cloth a couple of times, and everything was as it had been before. I should probably go. I saw Camille. There weren't so many customers at the register. Wait, I'll come with you. And he went up. Okay. She was already headed that way. My name is Christopher. Camille heard about you from behind. Camille. She didn't turn around. Buy a doll for your sister, he pointed to the beautiful toy in the girl's hands. My daughter is waiting for me for the holidays at her grandmother's. She did not begin to sly. She didn't go on with anything. Christopher. He was buying something too. And when he went outside, saw Camille crossing the street, caught up with her. Can I walk you out? He walked beside her. I think you already do. She smiled. Camille thought to herself, is it so easy to step on a man's foot in a store? And in the next moment you had already made an acquaintance. She liked Christopher. He was solid in a coat with a briefcase and an umbrella. You're going somewhere. He was looking at the big bag in her hand. Yes, I live in the country and now I'm studying here. For the holidays I decided to visit my mother and daughter. Camille said casually, let me help you. He held out his hand to take the bag. Thank you. She was really grateful because the luggage was heavy. They reached the train station, stopped. Camille, I'll see you again. He'd like that very much. Why not? She saw her bus pulling up. Then tell me where you live in the city and I'll be sure to come. He looked in the same direction as her. Yes, she nodded and dictated the address to him. Before meeting, he stood looking at her through the glass of the bus. Till with only one lip the girl spoke. On the road she looked at, glimpsed trees, but did not see them. She thought about her new acquaintance. Finally, the familiar outline of houses appeared ahead. A smile appeared on the girl's face. She imagined how Jenna would greet her now. She got off the bus and headed towards her house. Everything was familiar here. Camille greeted the locals along the way. She was already at her gate when she saw Stephen. Hi. He came up to her. What are you doing here? 
She didn't feel like talking to this man. I wanted to ask how you were doing. The girl could see he was drunk. She pushed him a little and went through the gate. He didn't dare follow her. Daughter. Hi. She's out on the porch. Emily, why did you come out here to meet me on purpose? You couldn't figure out Camille. No, I thought your ex-husband was gonna fight again. She pointed to the gate. Isn't this the first time? The girl was very surprised why no one had told her about it before. Yes, I'm sorry I didn't tell you. The mother entered the house, waiting for her daughter to catch up with her. What does he want here? All sorts of thoughts about the baby and everything else immediately began to pop into her head. Nothing to drink or money for a bottle. She heard the answer to her question. Wow, Camille stood up and froze. There was no telling how long she would stand like that and what she would think about. Mom came out of the room. Hurricane Jenna High hugged her. What took you so long? The girl clutched at her mother's neck. I'm sorry, sweetheart, but we'll be together soon. She knew she would be. Okay, granddaughter, let mommy pass. Her grandmother took her in her arms. I missed you so much. Camille looked at her mother. Yes, let's go to the table. They all sat there together. So, are you ready for the party? Leaning over to the baby, Camille. No, we don't even have a Christmas tree. The little girl said sadly. That's okay. We'll find one today. Her mom kissed her. Yay, started jumping around the kitchen. As Camille had promised, she bought a small Christmas tree. They set it up in the room, decorated it with toys, and now the holiday felt real. And the presents, looking under the tree. Girl, wait, Santa Claus hasn't gotten to our house yet. Camille laughed. Overnight, she prepared everything, packed everything nicely, and tomorrow. As soon as they sat down at the table, she would put it all under the holiday tree. Everything went just as Camille had planned. Her daughter was so excited about the doll that she did not sit at the table at all. And when the women came into the room, they only smiled when they saw her sleeping again with the toy in her arms. But how are you doing in town? Asked Emily. Finally, they could talk amongst themselves. It's fine. There really wasn't much to tell. She didn't want to talk about the latest acquaintances because nothing was clear. Okay, when you want to say something, don't be shy. They raised their glasses, congratulated each other, had a drink after the sit-down, put the dishes away and went to their room. Well, it was time for me to go to school again. Camille has been home for a week. May all be well. Mother and daughter hugged her. I will miss you very, very much. The girl cried. Just like me, Camille did not want to cry, but one tear traitorously slipped down her cheek. That's it. Emily took her hand and went to escort her to the gate. While the girl headed towards the station, back at the dormitory, everything was the same as before. Nothing had changed in the week they hadn't been there. They had to start studying again. Camille, there's someone here to see you. One of the students came into her room. Thank you. She wondered who it could be. When the girl came downstairs, she saw Christopher, as she expected. Today he was wearing a tracksuit, which looked very young for a young man. Yes, young. It was the first time Camille had seen him in an overcoat and thought he was a man. Hello, she went up to him. I couldn't wait for all these holidays to be over. He looked up. The janitor was standing there watching them. He gave Camille his hand and looked toward the exit. The girl understood immediately. She said that she had to change her clothes, and in a minute she would be outside. That was the deal. Where are you going? Wendy stood looking at her. Camille didn't usually leave the dormitory at all. I'll tell you all about it later. The roommate was embarrassed. She grabbed her jacket, put on her shoes, and walked out into the hallway. Christopher stood on the porch. Well, that's it. I'm ready, she walked up to him. I'm really excited about this. He looked her over from head to toe. They walked just down the street. When they reached a bench that stood in the shade of a tree, they decided to sit down and talk. I can't explain it, but there in the store, when you stepped on my foot, I liked you right away. Christopher began to tell her. 
Of course, I can't say that. Then was very much frightened. She did not look at him. But later I can say that she also paid attention. They were sitting like two schoolboys who couldn't admit their feelings for each other. On the one hand, it was funny. But on the other hand, it was only the second time they had seen each other. Let's go to the movies tomorrow, asked her okay. Camille was thinking about something. How long have you been a student here? I wanted to know more about her. Six months. For some reason she felt embarrassed by that answer. Why do you answer like that? He couldn't understand. A lot of people in my class say I'm a late enrollee, but I think it's never too late to study. Camille pulled some kind of wrapper out of her pocket and now cupped it in her hands. Why are you even thinking about this? When you got in, you got in. Maybe you didn't get the education you wanted. And now to re-educate yourself. He didn't understand what the problem was. They chatted some more, walked around town, and Christopher went to see her off. Because Camille said there was something else to prepare for school. Don't forget about the movie. He told her on the porch. Sure enough, she walked into the dorm. Cheeks burning. She went up to her room. Tell me you're on a date. Wendy sat her down right away. Yeah, on a date. She told her cryptically. So, who is he? Where did you two meet? The neighbor was curious about everything. Camille told her how they had bumped into each other in the store, and after that Christopher had already recognized her. Wow, what a way to go. Some people go to bars, restaurants, clubs, and can't meet anyone. And you just stepped in the store. She laughed on his foot. Oh, Wendy, don't be silly. We don't know anything yet. Camille didn't want to rush things as usual. Christopher came every day. It was very pleasant. He was smart. Camille liked to talk to him about different subjects. By the time the warmth came, the girl was planning to go to her village again because there were long holidays ahead. Are you sure you don't want to take me with you? Christopher asked her. Do you really want to? She didn't know what to do or how to be. You know, I'm that kind of person. If I do something, I do it thoroughly. If I choose you, I want it once and for life. He took her hands and turned her around to face him. So now do you want to go to my village to meet my mom? She concluded how smart are you? He kissed her. Okay, let's go. Didn't we agree on a place to meet tomorrow? Camille was very worried. What are you so worried about? Wendy asked her tonight. It's not every day you bring your fiancé to meet your mom, she said. What's the big deal? Well, he's a good guy to meet. Or what are you worried about? My friend didn't understand. How will Jenna take it all? Camille sighed. Yeah, she'll take it fine. A man who's adequate should please the girl. Let him buy her candy. That's all it takes, Wendy advised. All right. Camille adjusted her pillow and lay down. It took her a while to fall asleep because she had different thoughts in her head, but eventually she fell asleep. In the morning, she went to her vapor classes, and after them, she could go to the train station. Camille saw from afar that Christopher was already sitting there, waiting for her. Various thoughts came into her head again as to how she would bring him to the village. What would she tell her mother? After all, she had never told her about any young men, and now she'd come at once with her fiancé. But if she decided to do it, she had to do it. So she approached him from behind. And I'm waiting for you. He stood up and put his arm around her. Are you really ready to go to my mom? She asked him that question again. Of course I am. Why do you ask every time? He couldn't understand. They got on the bus and drove down the road, talking a lot. Camille showed him different places she'd been. Beautiful views of the river. There's not much green now, but when it's in full bloom, you'll see how beautiful it will be. She promised him. They were approaching the station when Camille spotted Jenna. For some reason, she got even more excited. Just as they got off the bus, Christopher heard Mommy, Mommy running towards her girl. Hi, honey. She sat down and hugged her daughter. How are you here? Grandma said that there are long holidays ahead and most likely you will come to us. So we came to meet you. Territory, girl. Suddenly she stopped and looked at Christopher. 
meet Christopher. Her mom told her, Hi, Uncle Christopher. She held out her hand to him. Hi, he said to her and took a candy bar out of his pocket. Oh, thank you. I like that kind of candy, she said. All this time, Camille's mother stood by and watched the scene. Of course, she didn't interfere in her daughter's affairs. She decided that later, when there was time, they would talk privately. Christopher, I'd like you to meet my mom. She brought him over to a woman. Nice to meet you. He extended his hand to her, and she shook it. After that, we all went home. For some reason, it was so peaceful. Emily, I didn't just come here. Christopher said that evening, when they were gathered around the table, and I realized it. The woman glanced at her daughter. I like Camille very much, and I would like her to be my wife. He reached into his inside pocket and pulled out a ring. That's a good one. And he didn't say a word. Camille looked at the gift. What about Uncle Christopher becoming my daddy? Running around Jenna. Anything's possible. Camille put the stir chain on her finger. They were sitting. Camille put her hand on her head. Sitting there, watching, seeing how happy her daughter was. Then she left them at home, went to her friend's house. You have a good mom, said Christopher Camille. Yeah, she put the little girl on the stairs. All right, baby, let's get to know each other. He tickled her, yeah. She laughed. This time the couple could only stay here for three days. After that Camille had to go to school and Christopher to work. Jenna, mom will be on vacation now and we'll come and get you. A young man sat down in front of her. Yay, and I'll live with you. She was already happy about something that hadn't happened yet. Yes, he looked up at Camille. That's how it worked out. When the girl passed the last exam, they went together again to pick up their daughter. The mother was so very upset. After all, when Camille went to study, she had to quit her job. And now they're leaving her alone. Don't be upset. You can always come and visit us, hugged her daughter. Okay. Her mother knew that she would definitely come to visit them many more times. Christopher moved Camille into his apartment. That's where they brought Jenna. They were a complete family now. All they had to do was get their passports stamped. Are you happy? Christopher asked her when they had been together for a month. Very much she hugged him. Time flew by quickly. Camille graduated, got a job. Jenna went to kindergarten. After that, she went to school. Christopher and Camille were happy to have such a beautiful daughter. Yes, a daughter. Because Jenna almost immediately started calling Christopher daddy. He didn't mind it, but he never gave up hope that they would have a child together. Today was the big day, Dad said. In the morning he would put on his suit. It was me or us and Jenna was getting the hang of it. Of course you do, but it's not so easy for us either. He sat down in front of his daughter, adjusted her jacket, helped her put on her briefcase. Come on, let's go. Camille joined them. In her hands was a huge bouquet, which consisted of asters and gladiolus. They were on their way to the lineup, which was the first time in the girl's life. Camille was a little worried, and Jenna on the contrary, everything was interesting. School life is not easy, but it concerns not only children, but also their parents. How are you doing at work? Christopher asked his wife. It's fine. Why do you ask? She demanded pies in the kitchen. You look tired. Did he help make the filling? No, it's fine. Jenna's just a lot of work. And it was true. The kids had so much schoolwork that mom couldn't keep up at all. Why didn't you say anything? I can help. He'd do anything to make the family happy. Then see what they're doing today. The girl was already in the fourth grade. She was bright, but she still didn't understand a lot of things. Only after deep consideration of the subject did she do the right thing. Well, in their family, it was mutual, each helping the other. Jenna, get up, you're late for the dance, shouted from the kitchen mother. Can I not go today? The girl was in seventh grade. She used to go everywhere without fail, but now she was beginning to exercise. No, that won't do. You're always ready to go out with your girlfriends. You have to try harder here too. Camille came into the room 
and looked at her daughter. Okay, she got up reluctantly and left like that. Mom, giving her daughter time to change. And Jenna went to the dance class, which she was already tired of. She'd been going there since first grade. And now that everyone was older, she didn't want to waste any more time on it. Jenna, where are you going? Her friends met her. She rolled her eyes at the dance. Let's go for a walk. What do you need them for? They talked her into it. Come on, it's okay to skip it once. She looked around as if she was afraid her mother was watching her. They were meeting in one of the courtyards because there was a group of older guys there. They didn't pay any attention to the girls, but they still came to see them every day. Hey, Jenna and her friends walked past the young men. Uh huh. They didn't even turn around. They weren't interested in the kids. Why don't they even look in our direction? Asked Rick, who liked Rick. Because they have other interests, answered Jenna. The girls didn't waste the opportunity. They were in that yard every day. Come here, somehow John called out to Jenna, that she didn't expect to be called. The school year was almost at an end, only a few days left until vacation. Go on, her friends whispered to her. The girl walked, her legs starting to shake. John was only a few meters away, but she felt like he was miles away from her. When finally Jenna was close by, the guy laughed, did you call me over for a laugh? She didn't understand. She somehow braved it right away. No, it just shakes like a leaf. He took her hand. I can't help it. Jenna was telling the truth. All right, let's go. There's something to do. He called her over to the others. Hi, she came over. Listen, without greetings began to talk guys, we need you to come with us to the disco. Why? The girl realized they had some kind of plan. Our girls decided that we won't find anyone and sewed us up. So we'll show them that we don't care, they explained to her. She turned to her friends at that moment and waved for them to come to them. They were just waiting for that. They were there at the same moment. Jenna recounted everything to them. We agree. They imagined going to the disco with them. How will their classmates be jealous? Then we'll do it on Saturday. We are waiting for you here. John looked at Jenna and smiled. She must have fallen in love with him at that very moment. Jenna, I found out you were skipping the dance. Her mother came to her room. Did your teacher call you? The girl didn't understand. There was one class left until the end of the year at least for him. Go, the woman asked. And from September, I will not go. She asked the woman. We'll see. Camille avoided answering. On Saturday, the girls had been at Jenna's house practically since lunchtime. They were coloring and picking out what to wear. Man, it doesn't seem too bright. Did Jenna turn to her friends? No, it's fine. They approved of what she'd done. But the girls still cleaned up a little of the makeup with wipes. Finally, they were ready. It was still over two o'clock before the event started, so everyone gathered in the same courtyard. Hi. The guys finally came over. They were now chatting like old friends. Let's go. Jenna took a look at John. Aha. Uh -huh. He smiled at her. Jenna walked over to him, taking his hand in hers. This was very cool to her. John was in charge of the company. And now she's walking beside him. Why so much makeup? Asked the guy on the way. I knew it. She regretted not cleaning up as much as she wanted. Listen to her friends. I had showed the DK where the disco was held. Stephen began to shiver. What if your girls start fighting with us? Asked Jenna. For some reason it only now came to her mind. They won't. And if they do, we're always here for them. He answered her. Good. She trusted that John would be able to handle everything. That night was just as the guys had planned. All the girls were older than Jenna and her friends by only one year. As soon as they saw that those came with their friends, they started to talk over each other. When Jenna went outside, they hurried to be there too. You know they're ours, said one of the girls. They were yours, now they're ours. She was not shy, Jenna. They bickered a little longer and then went back into the hall. A slow dance began. John approached Jenna. They danced, 
and she could see her rival's eyes sparkling. Let's get out of here. Her boyfriend called out to her. What about the girls? She looked at her friends. They can walk on their own. He looked the same way as the girl. Choosing well between the girls and the boyfriend, she favored him. They went outside. It was warm. Jenna took the guy under her arm again. They headed to where the market was during the day. Let's sit here. He beckoned her over to the tray and stood up himself, across the street. Okay. She liked the way he was treating her. You're cool, he touched her. You are too. She was smiling. She felt good right now. What if we start being friends? Did he suggest it? Let's do it. She couldn't believe she was saying that. Come on now, I'll walk you out tomorrow. Come to the courtyard. He gave her a hand to help her climb down from where she was sitting. The next day, as promised, he was waiting for her where they always met. Jenna, are you two really dating? Looked at her surprised by her girlfriends. Yes, he proposed yesterday. She told them. But wow, what kind of guide did she get? Yeah, she looked down on them. But I gotta go. Jenna headed towards John. The girls kept up. They believed that if their girlfriend started hanging out with a guy like that, they might get lucky. Hi. She came up to him. Were you standing there with them for so long? He asked about the girlfriends. Talking about you, she told him honestly. The guy and the girl started a serious relationship. Now they rarely sat in that courtyard as a group. More often John came to pick up Jenna and they went for a walk. Who's that guy coming to see you? Asked her mother one day. His name is John. We have been friends for a couple months now. She blushed when she told her mother that. Why don't you bring a stranger to visit? The woman was afraid because the guy was five years older. I do not know, as that time has not come yet. Shrugged his shoulders. Why are you picking on her? Christopher intervened in their conversation. Well, I'm a mother. I need to know who my daughter is socializing with. Camille didn't understand him. Your daughter is 13 years old. Until she is so old that she can choose her suitors, will change them more than once laughed Christopher. It's good for you to reason. You don't worry like I do. She sighed. Camille began to watch her daughter more carefully now. She was afraid that a grown boy might do something. But John was showing good behavior. The girl always came home on time. At school she studied well. And so after a while Camille let the situation go. There was a fall ball at school. And of course, there was a disco afterwards. Are you coming? Jenna John asked. And you invite to the school going did not feel like going. But if his girlfriend was going, he should be with her. When they got there in the evening, they saw that the girl with whom the guy used to be friends was also there. Jenna was dancing in a circle with her friends and suddenly felt someone pushing her back. She turned around and saw Vanessa, John's ex. What do you want? She asked her. You shouldn't look at other people's boyfriends and be friends with them. She answered her. You broke up. We started to be friends. What's wrong with that, Jenna? We didn't break up. I just wanted to teach him a lesson. And you see how it turned out. The girl spoke arrogantly. Well, who did you teach a lesson? You had Jenna laughing. The situation between them was getting so heated that everything was heading for a fight. Yeah, screw you, she said. Vanessa and shoved her in the shoulder. She grabbed her by the hair. And that's when the real scuffle started. The girls on Vanessa's side wanted to protect their friend. But the girls who were with Jenna didn't stand still either. John stood aside and only smiled at this. He was amused by it. The whole situation after the teachers who were on duty at the disco separated them. Jenna approached John. Is it funny to you? She asked him. Yeah, he answered. Fuck you. She turned around and walked toward the exit. Wait, he followed her. But Jenna didn't want to listen to him anymore. She was shaking with anger, not at the fact that she'd just gotten into a fight, but at having to fight over some guy. She'd never been so down at home before. She let the tears flow. Daughter, what's wrong? Mom came running into the room. Nothing. Please leave me alone, she asked. No, I want to know why my daughter is crying. Camille sat down on the edge of the bed. 
He turned out to be just like everyone else. The girl was crying. Calm down. There's nothing to suffer for. A woman stroked her head. Mom, you don't understand. That evening nothing could help her. Her mother brought her some warm milk, which Jenna drank and went to bed. In the morning, Jenna went to school. After that she went back home and never went out again. She really didn't feel like going out with John. But when she didn't come to the yard, the guy thought he should go to her himself. He knocked on the door, waiting a long time to be opened. Camille appeared on the doorstep. Hello, can I talk to Jenna? He asked her. No, answered the mother. Why didn't he understand? You hurt her badly yesterday, and she doesn't want to communicate with you today, said the woman. Since I hurt her, I just didn't want to get involved in the fight, that's all. He looked inside the apartment, but he didn't see Jenna there. Did she tell you that you two broke up? Camille looked at the guy carefully. Just call her, and that's all. The young man insisted. Okay, she went to the room where Jenna was. Told her everything. The girl went out onto the landing and closed the door behind her. Why are you doing this? Asked her John. You can all go to your Vanessa, we are not together anymore. She answered. He was sad to hear that, but there was nothing to do. So John just left. They broke up. Jenna suffered. But soon the study process, dance class, and everything else overshadowed her sadness. She still went out with the girls. John once tried to approach her at the disco, but she did not want to be with him. And then he disappeared from the city. Nobody saw him or knew where he was. Shall we go to the store? Christopher looked at his daughter. Yes, she nodded her head. Jenna was graduating from 11th grade, so she needed to buy a nice dress and shoes. Oh, I can't even believe school is behind us. Camille said to her daughter. I can't believe it myself, Jenna admitted honestly. Okay, enough about that. Let's pick out a dress, showed Christopher the outfits of beautiful evening gowns. And Jenna did nothing but change dresses and spin around in front of the mirror. They all looked good on her, but she chose the one she thought was the prettiest. At graduation, they stood all together. Teachers and the principal congratulated them and said farewell words. After that, they moved to the hall where the tables were already set. When the fun was in full swing, her friend pushed Jenna in the side. She looked up and saw John heading toward them. Can I talk to you? Did he approach the girls? No, she said and turned away. She didn't feel like talking to him or seeing him at all. Why don't you want to talk to me? I don't understand why things didn't work out with you the other day. He wouldn't leave, he insisted. Okay, let's go. Jenna left the table and walked with John towards the exit. She didn't want to get into an argument in front of everyone. Outside, he clarified. Yes, she nodded, and they walked out of the school. Tell me, why aren't we together? He asked. What do you mean? It's been so many years, and you show up and ask me why we're not together. She was very surprised. All this time I remembered you. I wanted us to be together. He wanted to hug the girl. I was forgotten to ask. She didn't look at the guy. Give me a chance, he asked. Come back tomorrow. Maybe something will work out. She went back to where everyone else was. But John didn't wait until tomorrow. He saw all the seniors getting on the bus. He knew where they were going. There was a sunrise reunion ahead. Jenna approached him from behind. God, why scare her like that? She turned to him. I love you and I want to be with you. He put his arms around the girl. At that moment, she settled in. It was so beautiful. The dawn was just beginning. And here he is, confessing his love. Okay, let's try again. She smiled. John didn't say anything. He kissed her shoulder, then her neck. Mom, I'm home. She came the next day. Good, you took a walk. She saw that her daughter's makeup was a little smeared. What's your look? She was pointing at her face. I need to tell you something. Jenna walked to the room and started to change her clothes. Something serious tensed the woman. John and I are back together. Didn't turn around she what? Why do you want him? Do you know what I heard about him? 
Camille couldn't believe it. They say you can't walk into the same river twice. You know, unless you step on your own toes, you'll never get anywhere. My daughter was in her pajamas. She was gonna get some sleep. Christopher, can you believe they're back together? The wife went into the other room and told the husband to stay out of it. Things can happen fast now, he warned her. You know what my friend told me about him. She sat down next to me. And what was it? He was ready to listen. He uses not only alcohol, but also many other things, whispered Camille. Oh, it's all your gossip. Christopher didn't believe it. Well, we'll see what happens. Camille wanted her daughter to be happy. She had to enroll, but because of the meetings with her boyfriend, she didn't want to leave this town. So let's go together. He suggested it to her. Are you serious? She was so excited. She was ready to go anywhere. They lived together. John did drink a lot, bringing strange people home with him. Jenna didn't like it, but she kept quiet because she loved John and didn't want to fight with him. Where are you going at night? She asked him as he was about to leave. It's none of your business. He'd leave, come back in the morning. And when Jenna pressed him for explanations, he'd lie to her. Sometimes the girl complained to her mother. She'd cry, told her to leave him. But Jenna couldn't. She loved the man so much that she stayed with him. If she kept on like this, it wouldn't be long before they broke up. Warned Jenna John, come on. He was hugging the girl, you'll see. Jenna threatened him with her finger. John was afraid that the girl would leave him. After all, the apartment they lived in was rented by her father. So after they fought, the guy did everything he could to make up. So John decided to relax a little. Went to a bar that was close to the house. He went to the bar. There was another young man sitting there. Can I have a drink? John asked the bartender. Sure, he replied. What's bad too? Asked the one who was sitting there. I don't get it. John motioned to him. Robert. The stranger held out his hand. John answered the man. Nice to meet you. The young man was dressed normally. He sat and just drank. At that moment, John was poured a drink. He raised the shot, looked at the new acquaintance. Here's to us, Robert said. They started talking all the while and drinking. What's the matter with you? Asked John to the young man. Oh, it's a long story. The one wrinkled his nose and brushed it off. It's hard if you're sitting here alone pouring. I looked at the counter where one glass after another was put out. Very exhale that tell. I was ready to listen and support almost a friend. And what to tell? We lived normally. And then it began. He took the glass again. With his wife, John said, Aha. He looked away. And more people came into the bar. What changed? The guy was getting the words out of Robert. I was an ordinary guy then. I studied at the institute. I knew and could do a lot of things. Robert began his story. I see. Prepared to listen to John. Molly came to pick up some documents. She and I bumped into each other in the hallway, and her hand fell out of hers. I sat down, started helping her, picking it up. One of the forms said something about oil deposits. I was surprised, I asked. At that moment, Robert stopped talking. He decided to wet his throat again. Wow, were they oil tycoons? John was all ears now. You could say that, but I didn't know that at the time. I'd only seen the papers. Our institute specialized in this subject, so I was interested. I started telling what I knew, and Molly walked and smiled. As it turned out, she only works with documentation and doesn't understand anything about it. Robert shook his head. Wow, it's like a fairy tale. John looked at his new acquaintance fascinated. That's what I thought at the time. I met him and asked him out on a date. I don't know who liked me better, her father or herself. But from that moment on, I was part of their family. As if he remembered something, he curved his lips. Why the father didn't understand. He was sick of his work. Once he got a half-empty well, as many people thought, but he developed it, dug near it. Turned out there was oil. He's been in business ever since. I knew a lot about the subject, 
We talked to him for hours a day. And then he told his daughter I was the perfect man to marry. Heavy, Robert sighed. And you got married. John guessed. Yes, we started living together. I worked with my father. I thought Molly and I were made for each other and would always be together. We'd never be apart. And she did this to me. He took another sip. What did she do now? It was a very interesting story. While I was just a simple guy, she loved me. And then things change. We started working. I started having money. We built a house, bought everything we needed. One day I came home and there she was with our driver, making out. It looked like Robert was about to cry. Wow. The new buddy shook his head. That's what I thought, too. And I asked her to come to her senses and come back. And she said I was just like her father. So seven years of our marriage went down the drain. He took the glass and drank it all down. They exchanged phone numbers. Robert promised to keep in touch with him and to get him a job. Since Robert had had enough, he got ready to go home. John volunteered to walk him home, but it turned out he had a car waiting for him. That's it, I'll call you tomorrow. He said to his new friend when he got home and told Jenna nothing. She looked at her husband, who was wobbling from side to side, and started talking to him and figuring things out. Just went to bed. And John sat there thinking of ways to get money out of the new buddy. I'm going to school. She told him to get dressed in the morning and left. Didn't even know if he heard or not. The couple's relationship was very strained. Jenna was even beginning to think that her mom was right when she told her about this guy not being right for her. Hi. That's when John dialed Robert's number. Hello, he remembered who was calling him. You promised to think about getting me a job. The young man reminded him. Yes, he only agreed because he always kept his promises. Come to my office. John was very happy. He'd walk, and on the way he'd think of something to catch on to. And then he'd think of something. Hi. He was greeted by a well-dressed man. Hello. For some reason, John got excited. I've got something for you. He opened the door for him. Okay, thanks. He tried to be polite. They sat there, had a long talk. And at the end, Robert said he was taking John into production as a technician. It was a happy thing. They said goodbye, and John went home. Jenna, I got a job, he told the girl. I congratulate you, she said cheerlessly. Why so sluggish? He stood up and walked over to her. Don't. She didn't want anything from him anymore. All right, don't be sorry. And he left the house again. Jenna breathed a sigh of relief. She didn't know what to do with this relationship. It was stressing her out. John went to work. He asked his supervisor to walk with him. It was for a reason. He wanted everyone to see who brought him here. This is where you'll be working. Robert showed me. All right, who's gonna explain everything to me? Just ask the new employee. You ask the guys. He pointed to the crew. Thank you. They shook hands and Robert went to his room. All right, guys, let me get this straight. John wanted to understand the principle of what was gonna be done. They started showing him one thing after another. Everything was easy and clear. Now he started coming here every day. But not much time had passed when the young man began to get more and more discouraged. So you do this and you do that. He commanded. Why would I do that? You're the one who should be doing it. The other workers resented it. You want me to tell you what you're really doing here? He called the boss that on purpose to show how close friends they were. The guys were afraid of losing their jobs, so they did what they were told. In the evening, John would go straight to the boss's office. How about a scotch bar? He'd sit in the chair. You know, I'm a little busy tonight. He didn't know how to tell the guy to leave. I saw your workers taking something off the property today, John said, as if in passing. What exactly did the supervisor tense up about? He often saw that there were fewer new parts than there should have been. I don't know, but they were still talking about it afterward. I realized I'd hit a nerve, young man. I see. Can you show me who it is? Got up from the table, Robert. Sure, agreed the boy. 
Maybe the guys did take something off the property. Nobody knew that. But when John pointed them out, and they were punished, now they were avoiding him. Remember when you asked me to go to the bar? You met Robert John after work. Yeah, he was waiting for the boss to call him. It's okay today. He pointed to the car. John slowed down on purpose. He wanted more workers to get out of the factory, and then ostentatiously got into his friend's car. But something even where we met, Robert looked at him. Come on. John didn't care where they went, as long as they got close to the money. He'd been getting a paycheck for a long time, and he hadn't done anything. As soon as he complained about someone, or said something that would implicate the employees, Robert would punish or fire them. Congratulations to you. The boss raised his glass. On what? Excuse me, comrade. With the fact that we work together, he smiled. Come on. They clinked glasses and drank. After that, the friend sat, chatted about many things, and then decided to disperse. When the next day everyone came to the production, then many were summoned to the director. Some he fired others, reprimanded. Why should we keep silent? Asked in the corridor one asked the other, exactly. We've already been fired. What's the use of hiding? The man rushed back into the office. We've already cleared this up, Robert looked at us. No, we have a statement, they said firmly. Speak up, the warden was ready to listen. Do you know what your protege does all day? Asked one of them. You mean John? I couldn't understand, Robert. He's the one they confirmed. What does he do? I wanted to hear what the workers had to say. He walks around, commands, does nothing, makes us do nothing and then tells you things that didn't happen. The man was shooting like a machine gun. I don't believe you. John is a good man. The chief did not believe them, but you follow him and see for yourself. The men advised him and left the office, not understanding anything. Robert looked out the window. In the evening, he called his friend again for a sit down. Of course, he wouldn't tell him anything, but he wanted to see how and what he was doing. Let's go to my place, and I'll introduce you to my girlfriend. John said, Oh, not today. I didn't want you to look like that. Robert, what are you talking about? Come on. The guy gave me his hand. Okay. Robert couldn't say no to him again. They got in the car and drove to John's house, stopped, walked to the driveway. Sure to be comfortable. Robert was worried. He didn't want to disturb people. It's fine. John assured him. They entered the apartment. Jenna was surprised. I wanted to kick her out at first, but when I saw Robert, I knew he wouldn't sit with her boyfriend until morning. Hello, he said hello, repeated after John's boss. Come on in. She pointed toward the kitchen. Why not the room? Or did you not clean up again, started stepping on it? That never happened. That's why Jenna's face stretched out. Why would you do that? The guest looked at him judgmentally. She didn't deserve it any other way, John assured him. Let's go Robert was ashamed, although these words were not spoken by him. The host placed a table in front of the sofa. They sat down. Jenna started carrying snacks from the kitchen and whatever John asked for. Thank you. Robert liked the girl. She didn't say anything, just walked back and forth. Have a seat with us, he asked her. No, thank you. She looked at him. Don't you get it? Shouted John. Why are you doing this? Do you want to seem cool or the master of life? Robert didn't understand. And that she refuses when respectable people ask. He shrugged as if he had nothing to do with it. If you don't want to, you don't have to do it. After these words and left for the kitchen. And I now said John and went after her. What she turned to him as he entered the kitchen and closed the door. It's okay what you've done here, hissed he. How could Jenna not realize what had happened to him? And that's the man I need. Got it. So you're going to come and sit with us like a sweetheart now. John grabbed her arm. I'm not going anywhere. The girl wanted to get free, but she couldn't move. I thought you'd sleep with him if I wanted you to. He squeezed her hand harder. Shrieked in pain, Jenna. 
What's going on here? Robert came into the kitchen. Fuck off. What's the boss doing here? I'm sorry. He pulled himself together. He let go of Jenna's hand. Robert saw that there was a purple mark on her. Let me see. He held out his hand. John stood and looked at them. Anger raged inside, but he didn't show it. That's no way to behave, Robert said. That's what I'm saying. John backed up his friend. That's what I told you. The chief turned to him. I see what you're looking at, mocking. The guy attacked his girlfriend again. That's enough packing. He won't leave you alone tonight. He was looking at Jenna. I already realized that. It's convenient. She didn't realize what was going on. Yes, he went to the hallway shoes, his father. Jenna did not bother to argue with anyone. She followed Robert's example. If you leave now, you may not come back, John shouted after them. If you don't stop working now, you don't have to go out. Robert told him quietly but firmly. I understand. The young man stopped. Robert and Jenna stepped outside. He pointed to the car. I can't. He'd kill me. And Jenna was in shock about everything that was happening. It's gonna be okay. They got in and drove off. He planned the whole thing. I couldn't figure it out, Jenna. I don't know. I don't think so, Robert said. Honestly. They drove to the house, and there the man walked her to the door, showed her where she could set up. You're so good to me. She thanked and went to her room. Jenna lay not sitting down. She waited for morning to come so she could go home, but she couldn't stand it either. She went outside. It was still dark. Where are you going? Robert asked her. He was sitting downstairs reading something. Oh, you scared her. I don't think it turned out well. She stood. Was she embarrassed at all? No, it was fine. He got up to see the girl off. If John had gone to bed after they left, he should be back to normal by now. Thank you, she said for the 100th time today. Get in touch, he smiled. The driver started her off in a matter of minutes. She entered the apartment and started packing. Where are you going? Ask it Joan to the girl. How do you think? She put forward her hand, on which there were huge bruises. I'm sorry, he tilted his head. I can't. I've never seen you like this before. She continued doing what she was doing. Jenna, marry me. He stood in front of her on the floor. Are you out of your mind? In the evening, you're yelling and screaming. And now you're proposing. She couldn't keep up with her young man's changing moods. Please, I love you, I'm jealous, I'm crazy about it. He was still standing in front of her. Stand up. She held out her arms to him. They embraced. Then they went to their room and went to bed together. How are things at home? Asked Robert at work in the morning. It's fine. I apologized. She forgave me. We do that a lot. John didn't look him in the eye. I hadn't noticed, Robert said honestly. Okay, I went out of the shop. He was so angry, he wanted to take it out on somebody. He started yelling at the workers, and they were silent, as usual. But the guy didn't know that cameras had been installed all around the factory at night. That would keep anything unnecessary out. And also Robert could watch John at work. Robert wanted to see something that he could charge the young man for. He thought back to the ride he had taken with Jenna yesterday. He had liked that girl so much. How could she live with someone like John? Hi. John came home, and Jenna was waiting for him with dinner. Steamboat Jenna herself didn't know how it was that she hadn't seen in his mouth the real him that he now appeared to be. Nor could she understand how she could love him after all this. But it was true. Smells good. He sat down at the table. I tried. Everything seemed to work out for them. After that, the young man called the girl into the bedroom. There he settled on the bed, took the camera in his hands. What are you doing? She asked him. Dance for me, he asked. Are you crazy? And Jenna couldn't understand. What do you want? He looked at her begging. Oak, she turned on the music and started moving to the beat. Then John turned on the camera. Come on, come on, he encouraged her. I won't be on camera. She stopped. What's there to remember? I'll look at how beautiful my wife was later. 
he begged. Okay, laughed Jenna. After that, Jenna danced while undressing. Strange as it may seem, but she got so carried away that she forgot about the camera. After the incendiary dancing, the girl climbed into bed, where there was a favorite man. There they had everything and continued. You are so hot, whispered John to her. I love you. She was melting at his words. Afterward, they would lie cuddled together for a short time and then fall asleep. It went on like this almost every night. John, come to my place, Robert called to the young man. All right now. He was in a hurry. How are you doing? Talking to Robert in the office. Why do you ask? Is everything all right? John was surprised. It's been a long time since you and I went anywhere. The boss told him. Yeah, that's right. He nodded. Maybe to my place, Robert suggested. Let Yurka cook something for me then. John volunteered then. Very good. I'm sick of these bars, said Robert. That's what he wanted. He wanted to see Jenna. After work, they met and drove to where John lived. They didn't say a word on the way. They couldn't find anything to talk about. Finally, the car stopped. They got out and walked to the driveway. Jenna had been warned. She came home from school and immediately started cooking. The pie that John loved so much was concocted. They entered the apartment and sat down at the table. How good you are at cooking, complimented Jenna. Robert, thank you. She blushed. John noticed it, his fists clenched, but he didn't show it. How are you doing in school? Robert asked. It was going well, so it was just the two of them talking. Robert and Jenna John, as an extra link, was just present. The evening went very well. As Robert got ready to go home, he kissed Jenna's hand. Liked what? Angrily, John said as the supervisor left their apartment. What's wrong with you? Was she afraid he might do something? Nothing. He grabbed her arm and threw her on the bed. Please stop, Jenna asked him. Now he went and turned on the camera and then attacked his wife-to-be. Whatever he did to her that night, she just screamed and cried. Hello, Jenna. Robert called the next day. Good afternoon. She didn't understand what he wanted or why he was calling. How did it go yesterday when I left? He was really interested in that question. It was fine. She stood in front of the mirror and looked at her face, which had a huge bruise on it. I want to see you. The man insisted. I can't. She knew he was testing her, so it didn't go so well. He guessed. Robert, what did you want? She cried. Are you alone now? He asked first, and then looked at the monitor where he saw John on the cameras. What kind of question couldn't you understand, Jenna? I'll be right there. He hung up the phone. Jenna had no time to do anything, to think over the plan of action. But the doorbell rang. There was nothing to do but open it. Jesus, the man looked at her. What did he do to you? That's none of your business. She lowered her eyes. Yes, it is. He went into the apartment and started packing her things. What are you doing? What do you mean you're doing? She looked up with big eyes. We're going to my place. There's nothing for you to do here. He spoke confidently. What about John? She was worried. I'll deal with him myself, Robert promised. After that, they got into the car and drove to his house. After he explained to her where and what to look for, and then he drove to work. John, I need to talk to you. He called him over to his place. You've been getting a lot of calls, buddy. One of the employees said he was asleep. That's none of your business. The guy yelled at him. He quickly went to the office to go up to the boss. Hey, what do you want? He walked into the office. To fire you, said in a stern voice Robert. That smirk he heard, couldn't stand his tone. Warden, what did I do? Didn't understand John. What did you do? Robert turned the monitor to him. You can't prove anything. The guy got all nervous and twitchy. Jenna, I got her now. Leave her alone. Spoken calmly, Robert. You're gonna take my woman for yourself, aren't you? Shook his head. Thought he had it all figured out, didn't. All I did was save her from you. 
you saw her face. He got up from his seat. One million, said the young man. What don't you understand, Robert? One million, and she's yours. Not a muscle flinched on John's face. And if I report you for carrying from the factory, he pointed at the monitor. Ah, you almost threw yourself at it, John. You can't. Robert shook his head negatively. Are you going to agree to my terms or is your life going to be hell? He was no longer embarrassed. Okay, one million, and you never even remember her name. Go to her. It's a deal. They shook hands. John walked happily out from the supervisor's office. He called his car and drove home. There he saw that the bride's belongings were indeed gone, rubbed his hands together, and smiled. He decided to wait a couple days and then start putting his plan into action. This wasn't how he wanted to set things up, of course, but since things hadn't gone according to his plan, he found a loophole here too. A month passed. John knew that Jenna was still living with Robert, so he started following the man, saw him arrive at work and dialed Jenna's number. What do you want? She answered after the second dial tone. Hello, darling, he said in a unified voice. Go ahead. She waited. At first John wanted to tell her that her new suitor had just bought her, but then he decided against it. I want money every month, 200 million, 300,000. He spoke in a tone that made it impossible to argue with him. Are you crazy? She even laughed. No, but you are. When your video gets into the wrong hands, and you bet it will, I'll be well paid for it. He's laughing now. John, you won't do that. Her voice was strained. You know me. I'd do anything for money. She knew that. Okay, I'll think of something, the girl promised. That's my girl. I love you. The month went exactly the same date. You owe me the full amount. He passed out. Jenna sat down on the bed and covered her head with her hands. What should she do? She would not be able to ask Robert for so much. She would tell him where she could get such money and even monthly. The girl fought for the rest of the evening until Robert came home. Hi. He came into Anja's room. Hello. She got up and walked over to him. Jenna, let's go together. Let's have dinner, he asked her nicely. Now she had to do everything for them to be together. They went down to the first floor and sat down at the table. Jenna, have you considered us as a couple? Asked her a question head on. Robert. What about John? She said that on purpose so he wouldn't think she was frivolous. What about John? I think he's lost his mind. He started putting garnishes on her plate. Okay, I'll think about your suggestion. And she started eating. It was so embarrassing that she was cheating on such a good man. But she had no other choice. That's the answer I like. He smiled. From then on, Robert would leave money for Jenna before he left for work so she could get to school and buy something for herself. And she'd take the crumbs and put the rest away. Hey, you came home, Robert, and I made you this. And Jenna was downstairs waiting for him. Where's Valentina? He was looking around for his assistant. I decided to let her go and cook for you myself. She was honest. Thank you. He came over and hugged her for the first time. Jenna didn't resist. Robert. She looked into his eyes that Robert was looking at her too. I like you, but I need to get used to it. She was telling the truth. To be honest, she was already confused. Where in this house was the truth and where were the lies? When Robert left to take a shower, she saw that he had left his briefcase downstairs. She walked over, opened it, and there were papers and money. And Jenna clutched it. She didn't want to do this, and she didn't. But right now, her reputation depended on it. The girl took out a few bills, tucked them into her pocket. What are you doing here? She just had time to close her briefcase. I'm looking at that beautiful stone you have. She lied because his bag was on top of it. Do you want us to drown it? He asked. Sure. It wasn't a lie. She really wanted to. Now Robert had gone somewhere. He came back, put some wood inside, lit a match, and in one minute the fire was blazing inside. It was beautiful. She sat down in front of him. What did I say? 
He lowered himself to the floor beside the girl. She couldn't take her eyes off the fire. She sat and looked at it. She saw different pictures of the world. You're beautiful. Robert put his hand on her stomach. Thank you. She was transfixed by what was happening. Robert got up, went to the bar, poured wine into glasses, and brought it to the girl. I want you to have the same feelings for me that you have for John. He clinked his glass, about her took a sip and she did too. After that he started kissing her. Jenna at first was embarrassed. Robert saw this and stopped. No, keep going. She turned around and hugged him. You are the most wonderful girl. He touched her lips. In the morning when Robert wasn't home, she counted it out. All the money she had was missing a couple thousand. But Jenna thought that would be enough. She went to the place where they had agreed to meet John. Here, give me the records. She handed him the money. You're a fool. Now you'll give me this much every month. He laughed. You what? Where will I get them for you? She looked at him with big eyes to please her new lover more often. He will. He turned around and walked away. And Jenna remained standing. She felt like she'd been doused in a slop that would never wash off. She went home and sat thinking again. Why so sad Robert came up to her? No, it's okay. She hugged and kissed him. Jenna now knew where the man's money was. She could take it freely, but she didn't want to. What are we going to do? Every night they found something to do. Let's go for a walk. She just wanted to live, not think about something bad every day. What do you say? He took her hand, and they left the house. That evening went as well as any other. Robert and Jenna. The relationship progressed slowly. Every month she carried John's money, saved some, took some without asking. It was so disgusting when you deceive someone you've grown close to. Six months went by. Robert and Jenna were living soulmates. Will you marry me? He asked. No. She turned away and cried. You what? Didn't he realize what was going on? I can't tell. She didn't look at him. When she met John once again, she told him everything. He's asking me to marry him. I can't marry him while I'm cheating. She begged him to give him Plushenko. You what? It's a gold mine. As a wife you can bring even more. He rejoiced. Jenna looked at the man she once loved. His eyes were crazy and his laugh was the same. I can't, she screamed. Then anyone with your ass on all the screens. He pointed to Jenna's pocket. Well, please leave me alone, she cried. Have you thought about me? John walked in the opposite direction from her. And Jenna returned home. Her attitude was serious. She was waiting for someone she felt good about to come home. You might even say she loved him. But the girl was afraid to admit it to herself. Hi, sweetheart. He hugged her. Hello. She was hiding her eyes from him. I couldn't figure out what was wrong with you, Robert. I can't tell you that, Jenna said. But you try. He crouched down and sat her next to him. Okay, she took in more air. I'm ready to hear everything, and I'll accept any truth from you. He told her. I'm so ashamed. She couldn't keep her voice down, and Jenna fell silent. My loved, speak, he asked. John. She started to what? What John, are you talking to him? Was shocked. Man. Yeah, she lowered her head even lower. I can't believe it. After everything he did to you, Robert even stood up. When we lived with him, he often filmed me dancing, and then what happened in bed? She blurted it out so fast that some of the words just got lost. And what wasn't getting through to the man? When you took me away, he called a few days later and started blackmailing me with it, told me to give him money. I'm sorry. She cried. It's okay. Tell me what happened next. He sat closer to her and hugged her. I didn't know where to get finances from you I couldn't ask you. So I was saving from the ones you were leaving me. And she couldn't say the next sentence. And took without asking. He finished. You thought I wouldn't notice. But if you need it, it's no shame. She raised swollen and crying eyes to him. I'm sorry, she said again. It's all right. Don't think about anything else at all. And don't cry. 
He put his arms around her and kissed her. Jenna couldn't believe it had gone like this. There was no fighting or arguing or anything like that. Sweetheart, so you will be my wife. He asked his big question again. What about the shoot? She couldn't understand. She didn't want anyone to see her. It'll be fine. I said I'd do what I said. So I'll do what I said. He kissed her again. If that's the case, then of course I'll do it. She pressed herself against his chest, realized that with this man she had nothing to worry about at all. The very next day Robert had hired people to track John down, take away his camera and all the tapes and flash drives. Now he definitely didn't have any dirt, but he didn't stop there. Apparently, there was money. By now he was stalking Jenna. He went crazy with it, realized things weren't going his way. Hey, you bitch, he hissed. When Jenna arrived at school, she would run back to the car, get in it, and sit there. That is until Robert arrived and walked her to the classroom. Robert, he's lost his mind. Jenna told her future husband, we'll get over it somehow. He always knew something to comfort her. I'm scared. What if he shows up at our wedding? Jenna was afraid. I expected anything from that man. Let him try. The wedding had to be postponed because John forged some documents and gave them out as from Robert Togo's firm. So they started checking, dragging him through the courts. Good thing the firm had a great lawyer who quickly cleared the whole thing up. Now John was being sought not only by Robert's trackers, but also by law enforcement. But that's it. I guess nothing can stop us now. Robert and Jenna's wedding date has been rescheduled. Good. She's calmed down a little bit too and stopped being scared. They invited a lot of friends, acquaintances, and family. There's the man I always told you about. Camille pointed at her son-in-law. Thank you, mommy, for everything. Her daughter hugged her. You're welcome, darling. The important thing is that you're doing well. They were happy. The wedding went off without a hitch. Robert couldn't be happy to have such a wife. So, do you want to go on a trip or a flight? He asked her. No, I'm fine with you here. Jenna never left his side. Robert took a vacation. He decided to leave all business and devote himself to the woman he loved. The week flew by quickly, but it was like a fairy tale. Robert had so much lost love that he gave it all to Jenna. Where were you before? Why didn't you take me away from him sooner? She didn't live in his arms. If I had, I would have. He held her so tightly in his arms and knew he would never let her go anywhere. A couple months later, Jenna met her husband at the door. What's wrong with you? He smiled. I feel like someone is going to be a daddy soon. She looked at him. I don't believe it. He lifted her into his arms. Believe it. She put her arms around his neck. Lord, not only have you given me the most beautiful woman, but she's going to give me an hair as well. He couldn't believe it. Things couldn't be that good. The pregnancy was difficult and Jenna was not well. The paramedics had been called to her several times. What was it that she didn't realize? Her mom had told her that when she was pregnant, everything was fine, and she couldn't feel anything. It happens. That's all the doctor said to her. Okay, Jenna was patient, and she wanted to make her husband happy so badly that she could endure and endure anything. She did, steadfastly for nine months. And now they're taking her to the hospital. Soon their baby will be born. Breathe. That's all Jenna could hear through the worst of the pain. What am I doing? She couldn't even breathe with every movement. Every movement was painful. Come on, screamed the midwife. Exhaled the girl. She thought she was going to die herself while delivering this baby. And suddenly there was such relief. No pain. There was nothing else. There was dead silence in the room, and Jenna even rose up on her elbows, and at that moment there was a shrill cry of a child. The girl put her on her mother's chest, whispered Jenna such a beautiful name. Standing next to the nurse like a little angel, explained the mother. She really does look like one. The woman took the girl, wrapped her in diapers, and took her away, and lay down for a while longer. 
and then Robert came to see her. He was informed, and he immediately rushed to his favorite girls. Congratulations, my love. He bent over his wife. Thank you. She kissed him. You're beautiful. He corrected her kick the jokes and it's already okay. She realized he was doing it on purpose to make her forget. They were transferred to a room that Robert had paid for. Everything here was state of the art. But Jenna didn't need any of that. She just wanted to get home. And so they were on their way to a place where they were loved and waited for and smiled and held their baby girl in their arms. Robert, of course, had prepared everything according to the other way he just couldn't. Jenna entered the nursery and gasped. Everything was so beautiful, especially for their baby girl. And you had tried so hard. She kissed him again and again. Drunk worked. It had been two months since the birth of the baby girl. Jenna was doing everything to make her daughter feel good. The grandparents came to visit, but Jenna said she would do everything on her own, so they just visited and left. Robert was so proud of his wife, he couldn't even put it into words. I'm gonna take my daughter for a walk, she told her husband. Well, he was not worried because Jenna always walked through the local traffic and never strayed far from home. This day she went out, walked the same route she always did. Then she remembered that she needed to stop by a local store. The clerk had asked for the number of a manicurist. She looked around for someone to leave with the stroller. Then she thought nothing would happen in a minute. She left her daughter by the porch. She quickly went in, put her business card on the counter, and immediately came out and looked in the stroller. Her daughter, wrapped in a blanket, sleeping peacefully. Let's go home, Jenna said, calmly and walked down the paths again. She walked, humming something to herself, looking ahead where she could already see their house. She walked through the gate, walked up to the porch. The security guard offered to bring the stroller and the baby home, but Jenna refused. She would bring her daughter in herself. The girl threw the lid of the stroller, took out the baby in a blanket, and it seemed somehow light, pulled back the corner and there, instead of the baby, some rags, screamed the mother so loudly that ran out of all the guards. Robert ran out too. Jenna, what happened? He bent over her, the daughter. She was sitting on the stroller. Call everyone in immediately, the man said. There was so much traffic, you couldn't miss a fly. Whoever did this couldn't have gotten far. He couldn't have gotten past the guards in a car so it would have to be on foot and through the woods. The uniformed man who'd just arrived was making his conclusions. That we're standing here. We need to run in there and calm the area, the woman shouted. She was ready to run wherever she needed to go. Maybe we should leave the mother at home, the lawman asked. No, Robert, I want to come with you. Don't leave me alone, begged Jenna. Okay, she will come with us, he agreed. Together, they walked towards the forest, which started at the edge where the last houses were. And the one who had done all this wasn't going to run far. As soon as the people entered the forest, he heard their voices and began to make noise himself so that he would be found sooner. I think the sounds are coming from over there. One of the policemen pointed with his hand. Let's go. He looked at the girl's mother and father. Quickly, Jenna hurried everyone. They got through some storm, found themselves on some yielding hillock, and Jenna almost fainted when she saw John standing there with her little girl in his arms. What do you want? Asked what he thought was an important question for this man, Robert Place. He answered honestly. John, you don't dare get hysterical. Jenna, do you doubt it? He lifted the child above his head. There's no need to provoke him, one of the men in uniform asked. Please, you want me to go with you, but don't do anything to the child. Jenna stood up. I don't need anything from you. He laughed his ugly laugh, and he leaned back so far that it looked like he was going to fall. Then what? What all this was for no one understood. You don't know how bad and painful it was for me. Now I want you to feel the same way. Try to feel what I felt. And again, that lunatic laughter was the conclusion of most of those present. What is is, Jenna saw one of the men pick up a pebble from the ground and go somewhere for a concession. 
She wondered what he was up to. John, remember how you and I were friends, how we loved each other. And she was quietly approaching him. What do you think? Is that going to make me feel better? He looked her in the eye. I don't know. I thought you loved me for real. Why do you think I married Robert to take so much from him? We have enough to last us a lifetime. And she lied. But her voice didn't even waver once. Drink, John heard from downstairs. He looked up. And at that moment, Jenna snatched the blanket from him. And the others threw him to the ground. Oh, you set me up as usual. He was beating hysterically. You wanted to rob me of the most precious thing I have in the world. She walked over to her husband, and Robert put his arms around her. Everyone, let's go home, he told Jenna. She lifted the corner. Her daughter was looking at her. It's okay, she whispered and kissed her. They returned home more or less calm. But Jenna could not forget the incident for a long time. Now she walked with the baby only outside the house. How did John's case end? She didn't go to any hearings. She didn't care as long as he was never in their lives again. He was committed to a psychiatric hospital, so I don't think he'll be out of there for a while. Or will he ever? I'm glad it's over. She was sitting next to the crib where their little girl was sniffling. Come here, he held out his arms to her. Jenna got up and walked over to her husband. Do you know how much your John valued you at? Finally decided to come clean, Robert. Did he sell me out? She couldn't believe me. For one million dollars. He held her clothes. You priced me pretty cheap. She laughed. I was willing to give whatever he said. Because I liked you even then. He kissed the woman who made him happy. I'm glad to hear that. I hope you don't sell me out. She laughed. Not for any money in the world. He hugged her tighter. There was a little girl crying in the crib. Mommy needed to feed her. Robert looked at his loved ones and only admired them. Are you embarrassing me? She looked at her husband. You should know how beautiful it is. He got up and left the room.